There is totally a mushroom right there. Totally. And this is a building. So, let us see what is in said building. Stuff! No, I don't know. Um, this part, you're supposed to use the split-up pads, which means you have to come back after you're able to do that. But you really have no reason to do so. But I'm going to show what you're intended to do. You're supposed to have one character step on that switch, and then that lights up the basement, and you can reach the jiggy. Oh my gosh. Yep, that sure is a place. But then you step off it, and unsurprisingly, the lights turn off. But there's an easy way around that. There's actually a couple easy ways around that. You don't really need to light it up if you know where you're going. Because, yes, it is dark, but it's still perfectly visible if your screen is bright enough. You can just sort of walk on your own, make it. Or, if your screen isn't light enough, you've always got the option of shooting fire eggs to, to temporarily light up the path. So, if you just use your head, you really have no reason to have to backtrack for this one later on. So you do that, and also, um, something you can do here that's semi-helpful is, if you are quick about it, you can use this jiggy to light up your way back, at least slightly, and I j j oh wow. I almost jumped into certain doom there. But yeah, um, I wonder how many more, t how many different ways I can say this is a dark room, but you can get through it anyway. So that was a dark room, but we got through it anyway. And let's see what else we can find down here. Well, like, not in this building or anything, but... The power hut. I shouldn't keep calling it a building. A hut barely qualifies as one. Can we blow that up? Maybe. Yeah. Didn't need to, but whatever. And there's a boulder. They'll never be able to get out with this cardboard boulder. And uh, I think I want to go this way into the red cavern. Is this what I think it is? Yeah, it's another dark room. How original. Again, you don't have to light it up, but this time you really have no reason not to. You just gotta shoot the little green flashing thingies on these generators and then it lights up the path. If you don't want to be bothered with that, then you don't have to be, but it's easy enough to do, so you might as well. That one you gotta use a game to hit it from afar. Not gonna bother really, because I can see this perfectly fine. I don't know if you can, because YouTube kind of screws with the quality of things. And here you got like this striped yellow warning tape, which is pretty easy to see even in the darkness. So you do that, and got another jiggy under your belt. That's what makes this shorts yellow, it's all the jiggies under the belt. Now, if only we knew why his voice is deeper since the first game. Because that was never explained. You can't say that he's, it's puberty, because I think he was grown up to begin with. Whatever, who cares. Um, this is the train station. Okay, I could do that. I'm saving that for last. Don't really have to, but I am. There's a Jinjo under a rock. Second black one I've got. And that leaves... Wumba stuff, a first person segment, and an annoying ass race. I'm gonna go with the Wumba stuff. It's the least entertaining of the things, but I might as well do it now. None of that. I just gotta remember what exactly it is that I'm supposed to do. Anyway, here the warp pad is inside the wigwam. I've gotta talk. Forgot. Yeah, just... come on. 
Let's skip the rigmarole. I like how she just, like, looks at her hand, doesn't even care about what's going on. Uh, yeah, I'm a detonator. I've gotta say, another thing that the first game has over this one is that the transformations were a lot more interesting. This one, a, a lot of them are inanimate objects, and you don't use them for a whole lot. But the one thing the detonator can do is blow up these piles of boulders. Which the fire eggs could not do for some reason. But whatever. So you do that. And there's a few more places where you can do it. Um, I'll, I'll speed up and not pause. I'll speed it up because nobody needs to watch me go through all this. It takes a while. There's one here in the fuel storage room, which I haven't even been in yet. There's nothing in the water, is there? I didn't think so. I'll grab the notes while I'm here, though. Because I'm not going to be coming back into this room that I'm aware of. There's not much to do in it. Yeah, here we've got a UFO in a box. I think he swears a lot because he's always saying bleep. Yes, I know he's not really swearing. Whatever. Work with me here. You work with me here too because you're not going onto the thing. So you blow that up. And the box can float in there. I'll speed this up again. But the door is blocked. It's another quest for the next level. This game loves doing that. It loves, like, giving you little previews of levels to come, I guess. And let's see what else is there. I can. Th there's, like, two things I can think of. Let me just... Get on the warp pad. Um, one of them was in the caves near Mumbo, so I'll go to that one. The other one was that, um, I think the building leading to the flooded caves. Don't really need to blow that one up, but I guess I will anyway, just for the sake of completion. Let's see if I can get that Jinjo. This thing is so bouncy, it's hard to maneuver it through the door as well. Especially in the speed run, because you don't want to be running into walls constantly like I am here. Get in there. Good lord. Okay, now what? Um, The other one is over here, I guess. So right now, this is the... Wait, is it? I'm not sure. No, it's not. I don't know why I still have it sped up. But it's not hurting anything, so I might as well keep it this way. Outside the crushing shed. It was over here. Ah, uh, shaking crazy camera. And let me just go... Oh, I guess it wasn't a building. The building was just blocking it. Let's see, is this the flooded caves? Yeah, it is. No need to go in there. And I can't start the first person segment yet, because I won't have enough time for it, I don't think. So I'll just warp back, transform, and I might be able to do part of the Annoying Rass race. If I keep speeding up. I wonder how much of that I'm going to be doing throughout this game. I wasn't planning on doing much of it, but... It is seeming to become more and more necessary as time goes on, because I'm not accomplishing a whole lot in this segment here. It's like just a bunch of setting up for later things. Anyway, this is now open, so let us open it, and here is Canary Mary, a character hated by most. Yeah, what's, worth, what's the point of even saving her? She hasn't even got a jiggy. No, she does. Oh, yes, she does. Yeah, we really need to see you flying back. This character confuses me. She's like, not a bird. But can fly anyway. I don't get it. So, let's... I'm not sure how long the race takes. I'm t I think it's going to take longer than a minute, though, so... 
Unfortunately, I'm not going to have time for that, but there is one thing I can do. What, this is the last place I haven't really been in yet. Get on top of the damn rock. Yep, here we go, the first person segment. Uh, before you do anything in here, you'll want to learn the new move, which is conveniently located right here. Another use for the feathered freak makes good use of for pointy beak. The bad guys know if it's no joke, just press B to give him a poke. So yeah, that's the beak bayonet. Uh, this mini game here, you're not allowed to shoot, or else you'll blow up the entire mine. So you got to use the beak bayonet. Um, in case I'm cutting this off, basically there's a bunch of TNT sticks. You got to deactivate them before time's out. Whatever. Ending.